Okay, so we're making good progress on our shower project here at the Zorthian Ranch. So uh, I'll just kind of say what we've done um, in the last couple days. Yesterday we got these round poles. You come in here. So we use these uh, these round poles because uh, you know we thought that would look nicer from below. Um, you know, so instead of two by sixes, so that then we got this reed fencing material. Right, so it just kind of looks neat from below, and put that in. And uh, and so yeah, so when we got our cross beams in yesterday, so we have like a, you know a couple foot overhang um, all around. It's actually more like twenty inches or so. And, uh, and we spaced out our rafters every 20 inches, okay? Got it in between 16 and 24, you know, that's nice. And then, uh, so we come around here. And we have our membrane on there. So we have our roofing membrane. It's, we use a self-tacking roofing membrane. And uh, so it's just, you know, we take it here, so it's, it's sitting on the, the top of the fascia board. And, um, and then so it's a good four or five inches um, of earth we'll be able to put in here. And then we'll have to, you know, put in some drainage holes in here too, so the water can drain out. Okay, so we are now in the process of insulating our structure here. So we are using these bottle bricks here that have been collected over the years. These are just pl little plastic bottles filled with trash. And so this wall here is all gonna be the bottle bricks. That wall there is foam. So we, there was some, uh, a box with a bunch of styrofoam and, and this over here is cardboard. There's a, um, a lot of cardboard here. So that all works great as an insulation, as an alternative to the fiberglass. All right. Um, so I'll, let me show you kind of what we've done so far. So yesterday I started putting the cob on the pallets, and um, so got our glass block window. We got our uh, circular. But with this, I just put a piece of plexiglass to the outside of the pallet, screwed that in, and uh, so that's just a nice way to do it. Uh, framed in the stained glass, and you notice here there is a little bit of cracking. Um, but that's totally fine um, because, I mean, the, the, the mixture is just a little high in clay. Um, but when we do our final finished plaster, um, that'll cover up all these cracks, you know, so that's, that's no problem at all. So don't, don't be concerned if you're, uh, if you're doing this and you have cracking on the first um, base coat. So um, I'll just show you here kind of the process of doing... Um, our cob. So actually, we pre can pretty much uh, start cobbing the outside now. So we have this pallet. This is all filled with these bottles, bottle bricks, these plastic bottles filled with uh, trash and everything. So, um, so this that's actually kind of a nice thing to demonstrate is just to show the different kind of insulation materials. So this is uh, plastic. Uh, this one here is straw. Um, over here is cardboard and foam. So, yeah, so, and we're going to be, uh, yeah, so we just have some cardboard and stuff and foam in there. So, you know, you can use, you know, anything, you know, really, it's just not, you know, like fiberglass insulation. All right, so basically what you're going to do is take your, your clay slip. This is just the uh, clay, this is like, there's the clay, earth, and water. And you put this over the pallets. This kind of serves as the, as the glue for the cob to stick to, right? And uh, just put it, just put it on there. You want to put some on? Yeah. All right. So you can just dip that, dip the sponge in the in the clay, <laughs> and you can just kind of sponge that on. There you go. <laughs> and then, then you just take your, the cob mix, and you just put it on. So it goes on. I don't know, maybe about an inch thick or so. And if it's any rocks, you can just, you know, pluck it out. And I like to wear gloves just because I find that it sticks easier. Uh, it doesn't stick to your hands quite as much. But if you want to do it without gloves, you can too. Um, I'll just do it without gloves just so you can see. So, 
Yeah, it actually feels nice with the bare hands too. <laughs> Alright. And so then you just get it on there like that. And then after you after you've got it on after you've got a section on there, then you can just take a trowel and smooth it out, right? But then we're gonna be doing a, a, a when this dries, we're gonna be doing a lime plaster then over that uh, on the outside and a, a clay plaster on the inside. And then here we have this drainage. Um, so I, we're going to be doing a French drain around the back, around the sides, to divert the water from the hill uh, to kind of go around. So we'll show that process later. And this is our mixture here. This is just a, a great mix of earth. We're just getting the earth right from, right from here, right? Basically just right from here and adding water and some straw to it. And uh, it's a pretty much perfect ready mix of um, 70% sand, 30% clay. Um, yeah, this is the, uh, the good, thank you. So this is our shake test. It does kind of look like a, a coffee, doesn't it? A clay, <laughs> clay shake. So this here, you can see how the, the sand kind of settle, settles to the bottom and the clay floats on top. So this is about 70% sand, 30% clay, which is exactly what you want, you want, you know, for a cob mix, right? So, uh, yeah, so we're on a gold mine here. So, um, all right, so that's pretty much the process. So we, in the next couple of days, we'll go ahead and cob all this and then let that dry for a week or so, and then we can do our final finished plaster. So, okay. All right. So we're doing the drainage now. We got this perforated pipe back here in our trench. And right. Oppo's putting the French drain, uh, the drain rock, over the pipe and we have the, the pipes there in the back uh, for the sink and Billy's working out the drainage over there and so then the water is all going to be going under here so we're going to be filling that with drain rock and it will be extending there beyond the deck this is what it's meant to. Okay, hello. So we are here at the uh, the site of the composting toilet and shower we're building here at the Zorthian Ranch in Altadena. And um, so, yeah, actually, Elena just came to, to visit. So we thought that I would just show her around and show you us as well, kind of uh, where we're at, do a little progress report. Right. Um, and uh, you can learn a few things. So, so first of all, so this is a, a structure. It's five feet by nine, right? Five by nine. And um, first thing we did was we leveled out the ground here, and then um, and then we got these pier blocks, right? So we got these uh, pier blocks we put in the corners. So we put um, like eight pier blocks um, down, um, kind of like dug a trench in the back and set those in, and then then got our uprights, four by four uprights. Um, in which they're just on the property. They had a bunch of these that are actually four by six um, kind of telephone electric poles. So you know, those are and then these are the pallets, right? So these are this uh, the pallets um, put in between the uprights, and then we insulated it with uh, straw and plastic, cardboard, mm -hmm. foam, um, and then put our cob. And so this here, this is our mix right here. So this is our our perfect mix of cob we're just using the earth right check this out let's see, look how good this is we're just using the earth right from the property we're just baking right right from here and it's, it's uh it has a lot of granite in it it's actually that's kind of what it is it's decompressed granite basically okay, okay. <laughs> well, i just want to say that when i walked up i thought it had a beautiful aesthetic i love the natural aesthetic that's what first hit me and then i was impressed to see that there is water power uh, a garden is is that what you're going to have on top is a, a living garden? roof uh-huh and uh and so i that that's how it first struck me but the aesthetics was the big mm -hmm. thing i really like for that. me it's repurposing junk and stuff that's around a property mm -hmm. that instead of going into a landfill goes to build something beautiful and earthy like this i just i love that idea so, uh -huh, let's reusing go inside. and repurposing uh-huh absolutely so you want to have one of these structures, yes. Elena? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> a living structure, a cob oven, um, definitely a cob shower and composting. 
Um, everything that I've seen in your book. <laughs> Books. Uh, you want uh, one of everything? Yeah, I want one of everything. Uh-huh. And th- these and could be a uh, chicken coop for uh-huh. the chickens, right? A cob coop. Yeah. And this could be a nice um, design uh, for for houseless folks. Yeah. I mean, the yeah, materials yeah. don't really cost much of anything at all. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just using the pallets, which are free, and insulation is free. The earth is free. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, the only cost really is the some of the wood for the roof. But if you're resourceful, you can get that for free. Right. And uh, and it's just the labor. You know. But that can be, you know, people volunteer. who are going to live in it, you know, volunteer. volunteer. Sure, yeah, exactly. sweat equity, right. exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, I'm excited. And it, we, if, to make it totally fireproof, we could also encase the, um, the eaves and the uh, fascia board with, you know, cob also. And uh, mm-hmm. so we could make it, you know, 100%, 100% fire resilient, you know, nothing flammable, which is really nice uh, to have in this uh, fire prone region here in Los Angeles. So, I'm excited to show um, uh, Frank, who's a concrete masonry, you know, does a lot of, you know, conventional construction, knows that really well, has been doing that for a long time, um, this kind of alternative construction. I call this, you do concrete, I do cobcrete. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, so this here, this is just a, a mix of just the earth right from here. I mean, we're like on a gold mine here. So basically, I mean, literally, I'm just getting the earth right from here just there i mean it's like and it's just and just add a little bit of water and it's just ready to go and you add water and some and some straw too i had some straw too okay so we are now in the exciting phase of doing our finished plaster on the outside of our little cob structure here at the zorthian ranch in los angeles so um, I did the inside. Actually, maybe you can come uh, take a peek at what we did yesterday. So you can see this is drying out nicely. So this is a nice earthen plaster, and um, so I'm loving it. So um, I just thought I would show you the process of how to do an earthen plaster in case you um, are ever feel so inclined to try it out because it's a fantastic experience. So the first thing you want to do is you want to screen out your earth, right? And the earth that we're working with, we're just getting the clay right from here. And there's a lot of rocks in it and kind of big sand particles. And so first I just, I put the, the earth in water and just kind of make a kind of a clay slip kind of milkshake. And then, um, and that's just to kind of soften any of the clay clods or anything. And then I use this, uh, I'm using an eighth inch screen, right? So I make like kind of a frame put the screen in there and then just put the, the clay in there and then just kind of run it through so you can see all the sand particles that the screen is catching you can use an even finer screen too if you want but I find, um, you know, eighth inch works well. So, so now you have a nice, a nice smooth clay slip kind of milkshake without any rocks or anything. And then I'm going to be adding some sand. So I'm just going to show you here when I do a shake test. So this is the earth here with water in it before I sifted it out. Okay. And so you can see, it's got, um, you know, it's got about 70% sand, like 30% clay. And so, but then when I sift it out, I sift out a lot of the sand. So it has less sand in it. So I have to now add some sand because I, I do want a good solid 70% sand, 30% clay. So, so now I'm going to add some sand to the mix. So I have a good, you know, 70% sand, 30% clay. I'm just making a small little batch because I don't, I don't need a big, I already have some right there. And so then I'm going to mix the sand in with the clay. So, so at this point right now, it's not really, it's the right amount of sand and clay, but it's not really fully sticky enough to be used as a plaster. So this is where I add um, things to make it sticky, right? So now I'm going to add a little bit of this flour paste. 
right? I just, I add a little bit of flour paste, about that much, you know, so for like a whole, a big, um, like a wheelbarrow full batch, I would probably add about a gallon. And then I get some of this uh, fermented nopal, the cactus juice, right? This has been fermenting for about a month. And I add some of that. So that's another sticky agent. And then I add some of this uh, horse manure and just put some in there. And so that's also sticky and it has some nice live enzymes. And then I add some, so this is like, so that's, uh, these three ingredients help to make it more sticky, right? So you're not so much relying on the clay to make it sticky. And then you get some chopped straw, right? And so, and I use this leaf shredder, uh, that works really well for chopping up the straw. And so I just add the chopped straw in there. And now, and now we mix it all up. And if you want to get in there with your feet, you can. So now it feels really, now it feels way better. Now it's, now it feels sticky. And, uh, and it feels like a really nice plaster mix, right? So, so I just did these parts here. Um, I'm just about to start plastering up here. And, um, so I guess I can kind of show you how I do that. So basically I just, I first I want to get the, the surface wet, right? So you want to just get the, the dry surface wet. And so the, the plaster will stick to it better if, uh, if the surface is a little bit wet. And then, and then you'll just take your plaster mix And just tap it on there. So it's going to go on about a good quarter inch thick or so. And so you see how I'm doing? I'm kind of slapping it on, kind of tapping it on so it has good contact with the wall. All right? And then after I get it on there, then if you, if you can get a Japanese uh, trowel, like one of these finishing Japanese plastic trowels, um, it's a great tool for this. And then you can just smooth that out. Right. So that's pretty much it. And then in about, uh, you know, in about an hour or so, then you can like take a little yogurt lid and if you want to then just kind of like burnish it, you know, kind of just go in circles and press press down really hard and kind of, um, you know, work it all in, um, then, then that's great too. So basically, so we'll let this dry and then we'll do a, a linseed oil sealer then over it. It's probably linseed oil and some kind of paint thinner like a, or like a, uh, an orange thinner or something like that. Um, so it penetrates into the plaster. And, uh, and then that should be, help protect it. Uh, and we also, we could uh, maybe try uh, sealing it with the, the nopal, the, the, uh, the, the fermented uh, cactus juice too, you know. So we can try that. It's been fermenting for a while, so it should be uh, pretty strong. So. Okay, cool.